Hello, ladies. Did you get your tickets? To the gun show? Everybody. Today I've got not one, not two, but three beast boxes to take a look at. These are all of the crab mold, of course. I've done quick reviews for a couple of these with the intent to wrap up my crab series with a comprehensive box grade, but before we get into that, I'll talk about some interesting details and the differences between each one of these little dudes. I've got so many crabs, I'm starting to look like one. <sighs> I'll start off by saying this is one of my favorite beast box molds. There are two variations, the BB-16 and the BB-18. The first release was a green version called Cannibal. One thing I want to mention is, when I first discovered Beast Boxes, there were maybe two or three that grabbed my attention. One of these was this guy, the BB-18 retool called Iron Claw. The first place I saw it was a T-Man 978 review. He's a really prolific Transformers and action figure reviewer, does great stuff. I definitely recommend checking out his videos. So the thing about toys, or really any type of collectible is, there's an emotional response to whatever grabs your interest, and in a lot of cases there's a nostalgia factor. So in the case of Iron Claw, being totally unfamiliar with Beast Boxes, there was just something about it that really spoke to me on many levels. For one, it's a very simple concept. It's a beast, it's a box, it folds up into a 2-inch cube and you store it in the container, right? It also reminded me of an 80's toy line called Starcom, which were futuristic space exploration vehicles. Most of them were containerized and folded up into a box and then could be transported in a crate or a larger carrier vehicle. 1052 Toys' strongest qualities is they're outstanding at character design. They study animals very closely to figure out the characteristics of it and bring out those qualities in their figure designs in really interesting and often funny, unique, and charming ways. So between Iron Claw and a couple of others that I first bought, my interest really took off from there. Anyway, for the crabs, the BB-16 variation is the female, the BB-18 is the male. These box repaints always get a two-letter extension to the ID number, of course. Overkill is a special edition release designated as BB-16WQ, and Meltdown is BB-16MD. Let's set these guys aside for a second and take a look at their packages. First off, here's Iron Claw. Orange packaging in line with his color scheme, cool schematic line art. Mechanical design is by Saibuku. This is the same designer who did Trident. I haven't seen this name come up more recently, and I don't know if they're still working with 5 Toys, but I kind of hope to see more of their work. A couple things I'll point out about Overkill, it's one of the first releases with the new 5-2 Toys logo. Also, mechanical design by X2R. Now this is interesting. There are two different designers named for the BB-16 and BB-18 crabs, even though they're nearly identical. I'm curious why that is. Last one here is a special release. Meltdown shipped in a custom box and included some cool collectible extras. Great looking box art, sturdy cardboard wrapped in a satin finish. It has markings that glow in the dark, and along with the usual included items like instructions and a character card, it came with a little Rubik's Cube and a rechargeable UV flashlight. Interestingly, this one's package does not designate a specific designer. Huh. Mysteries abound with these crabs' origins and who actually designed them. I'm genuinely curious about that. As far as I can recall, I don't think I have a single other beast box that does not have its designer listed on the package. If anybody else knows why 5-2 Toys names two separate designers for the crabs, I'd love to know what the background on that is. Let's talk about some figure details. Meltdown came with a custom box charger. Iron Claw is a standard figure, so he came with a regular box. And then you have Overkill, which is also a custom box. It's got a painted lid that kind of looks like a starting gate. As far as Meltdown, its box charger has UV reflective markings with an awesome design. And that's what we're working with. Very cool. And since I've got a few box chargers handy, in case you don't know, they can be connected on the sides or be stacked. You get enough of these things and you could build a wall of them. It's a great container design. They can be connected and released from each other really easily, but at the same time they hold together really well. So a known thing among Beast Box collectors is we're always interested in other people's collections and people will often ask you to share photos of your wall. I promise you, you never hear that request with any other figure line. Like I said before, 5-2 Toys does a superb job of studying animals. And that even goes as far as distinguishing between male and female crabs. So how do you tell them apart? On their underside, female crabs have a more rounded shell pattern, and males have more of a triangular pattern, which is accurate to crabs in real life. That's a detail you really have to look for, and it's a testament to 5-2 Toys' attention to detail in their craft. Let's take a look at some more figure details. The crabs have these interesting beveled edges and indentations, lots of fantastic sculpting in their limbs and shell. They have a little broadband antenna on their backs, a top hatch, a railgun on their undercarriage, the backpack piece as well as a canister, 
hand stall guides. The underside is sort of a ramp or possibly a jaw. I think that's up to your interpretation. With all these little add-on details, it kind of seems like these are little robotic crab tanks or something like that. You can actually have Dianots pilot these little dudes, which I think is super, super cool. One more thing I want to touch on is figure releases are pretty much always accompanied with really cool promo art. Iron Claw's art is outstanding. There's one in particular of a figure that I don't have by the name of Frosty, which had kind of a Blade Runner vibe. I'll tell you who does have a Frosty, Warehouse Wilgus. He's another figure reviewer on the YouTubes, and he does a lot of other cool stuff. Japanese pop culture, common Rider, some cosplay, and he's funny as hell. Definitely check him out. I want to do a quick demo of the backpack mounted gun mode. I'll use Meltdown for this particular demo. I'm not going to go over instructions for the transformation. It's really straightforward, but you can watch my overkill review if you want to see more details on that. Ports on the front of the canister and hooks on the back mounted figure. They just insert an Iron Claw's backpack. Then you got yourself a pair of tag team death machines. Let's talk about some differences between these crabs. So between the male and female crab molds, the male obviously has a much larger front claw and doesn't include weapon attachments. So if accessories is your jam, you're probably going to want to go with a female crab. The male crab has this dolly wheel of course, the female has a little gatling gun, armaments are a rotating saw and a spear gun, and of course much smaller pinchers. For articulation, you've got a rotating shoulder, elbow bend, and all the pinchers can open and close of course. The walking limbs connect to the shell with ball joints so it can swivel back and forth and up and down. Pivoting joints all together have quite a bit of flexibility to get into different poses. So you can get these into a more threatening stance, tilt it downward, you name it. Lots of options. As far as the actual size, it's actually pretty big, almost as big as my hand. Pretty incredible that this thing can fold up into a 2 inch cube. Overkill obviously has racing themed graphic styling pattern after the world famous racing team, Martini Racing. Checkered pattern on the antenna and canister, really nice silver paint application, you name it. Iron Claw has a lot of cool little graphic details. Rave. I'm not sure I've seen that graphic applied to any other beast box. You've got a caution here, nice looking arrow patterns on the legs and some subtle paint applications on the claws. Meltdown has a lot of tribal patterns, cool little details on the weapons, all kinds of graphic detail on the limbs and sides. Now it's time to give these crabs a box grade. This is my rating system of 5 points possible in 6 categories for a total score of anything between 0 to 30 points. Spoiler alert, I like all of my crabs. I wouldn't describe any of these as having any features or qualities that stand out over the others, so they're all getting identical ratings. Even so, there's a lot to be said, so we'll get into this. You could think of the crab mold as much of a versatile platform as it is a character. It works equally well as an autonomous creature of the deep and a robotic crab tank if you have miniature figures to pilot these. 5 out of 5. Lots of little play features, options between the larger male claw or weapons attachments and styling makes each crab not only versatile, but each version completely unique from one another. 5 out of 5. Transformation is totally straightforward, and it's one of only a handful of beast boxes that has a creature peeking out of a box in its cube mode, which I really dig. 4 out of 5. Articulation is very good, with joints designed to not only facilitate the transformation, but also offers a lot more posability than you might think for a crustacean. 5 out of 5. Build quality is great, with good quality plastic and mostly firm joints, although there are some minor annoyances like the eye stalks that can get knocked out of position a little too easily, and the antenna can't raise to a perfect 90 degree angle. 4 out of 5. The Crab Mold is one of those unique figures in the Beast Box line that is extremely versatile. Tons of little add-on features and individual styling, it works great as a standalone robot or a mech vehicle. It's a great toy for kids or an interesting desk toy for the discerning adult nerd. 5 out of 5. That brings the box grade total to 28 out of 30. And there you have it. Two of the three crabs I own are special editions, but from my point of view, you don't have to pay extra to get an excellent figure. And in my opinion, if you're someone who's starting a Beast Boss collection or just want to buy one and see what they're all about, the Crab Mold should be one of the very first on your list. I hope you enjoyed this review. Feel free to leave a comment and let me know what you think. And if you can leave me a like or subscribe, I'll appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and whatever you do, have a great day.